Welcome to the Electronic Church of God of Arizona and the Lord's Care Ministry. Today is May 19th, the seventh day of the week, the day that the Lord calls his Sabbath. The calendar says it is a Saturday, but that's no Chaldean message. The Sabbath is the day that the Lord proclaimed to be his Sabbath. He also gave us something here to, it's a command really. And uh, brethren, we're going to start out a little bit here. If you go to Leviticus 23 and verse 3, six days shall work be done, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest and holy convocation. You shall do no work there in it, and the Sabbath of the Lord in all your dwellings. Brother, if people argue what day it is, it isn't the first day. It says here, it is the seventh day, and it's the original is uh, Sabbath. Or the seventh here, let's go with what the seventh means. It's a seventh is, it's a seventh time. It's the seventh time of the week. The Hebrew word is Shabi'i. It's S H E B dash E E dash E E. Shabi'i. Brethren, if you want to know what the Sabbath is, you, the Sabbath mentioned here is. Sabbath, S-H-A-B-B-A-W-T-H, Sabbath. That's where we get our name, the Sabbath here in English. And it shall no work be done in that day. Well, brethren, with that, let's find it. Let's get right back over into the Lord's Care Ministry, if we will. Search for Knowledge and Truth, day 140 of the year 2012. Today's study, Out of the Wreck I Rise. Out of the Wreck I Rise. Brethren, I suggest you write the chapter and verses down that we give you so that you go back and study the whole context at your own leisure. You can also use a pause button down here in the corner, brethren, to start and stop this video study as we go along so that you'll be able to open up your own Bibles, read chapter and verse right along with us. We have a few this day. Okay, let's get right out of, right back into Out of the Wreck I Rise. And to do that, we're going to go to Romans chapter 8 and verse 35. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? God does not keep his child immune from trouble. He promises in Psalms chapter 91 and verse 15, I will be with him in trouble. It does not matter how real or intense the adversaries may be. Nothing can ever separate him from his relationship to God. In Romans chapter 8 and verse 37, In all these things we are more than conquerors. Paul was not referring here to imaginary things, but to things that are dangerously real. And he said, we are super victors in the midst of them, not because of our own ingenuity, but because of our courage, Be but because none of them affects our essential relationship with God in Jesus Christ. I feel sorry for Christians who does not have something in the circumstances of his life that he wishes were not there. Shall tribulation? Tribulation is never a grand, highly welcomed event. But whatever it may be, whether exhausting 
irritating, or simply causing some weakness. It is not able to separate us from the love of Christ. Never allow tribulations or the cares of this world to separate you from remembering that God loves you. That's found in Matthew chapter 13 and verse 22. Shall distress? Can God love continue to hold fast even when everyone and everything around us seems to be saying that his love is a lie and that there is no such thing as justice? Shall famine? Can we not only believe in the love of God but also be more than conquerors, even while we're being starved. Either Jesus Christ is a deceiver, having deceived even Paul, or some extraordinary thing happens to someone who holds on the love of God when the odds are totally against him. Logic is silenced in the face of each of these things which comes against him. Only one thing can account for that, the love of God in Christ Jesus. Out of the wreck I rise every time. Let me turn to you, O Lord, from the sweetest of earthly joys to find that you are best of all, the fairest among 10,000 and all together lovely. In 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 14 we read, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. My faith still clings. In 1 Corinthians chapter 16 and verse 13 we read, Watch you stand, fa stand fast in the faith. Brethren, in God's word only do we trust. Never in the tradition of men. Beware the tradition of men that make void the word of God. They have changed your Sabbath to the first day of the week. We've just read in Leviticus where it is the seventh day of the week. The seventh, not the first. And if you want to know, say, well, son, we can count Monday, and you can count seven and come back into Monday. But go to Genesis chapter 2, verses 2 and 3, where you find the rest and resting the Sabbath, and you'll find that it was the seventh day that he sanctified. And you, they're all enumerated from 1 to 7 in chapter 1 and verses 2 and 3 of chapter 2. The days are all enumerated so you don't get mixed up at all. The Sabbath, Sabbath has never changed. Brethren, if you want to see the kingdom and have eternal salvation with the Lord, and not be one of the tares torn out that you find in Matthew 13. If you don't want to be one of the tares torn out and thrown into the lake of fire, as I said, it says in Matthew 13, then get down on your knees and repent from following the tradition of men. Ask the Father and the Son to bring their spirit within you so that you will drive away all doubt and have strength of faith. That's why a good Christian bows his head to make his prayer because he's talking to the Father and the Son that's within him, not some holy thing that's way out into heaven you cannot find. He's right in here. Brethren, while you're on your knees asking for forgiveness, also ask for the wisdom, the knowledge, and the understanding in that love letter he sent to you, and that love letter is found in your own Bible. It's from the end of Genesis to the Amen of Revelation. 
Well, brother, and with that, we're going to close for today. You all have a great and wonderful day. I know I will. God willing, we'll see you tomorrow. Bye for now.